The Sony ZV-E10 is affordable, it offers 4K resolution and it shoots in 120p in full HD, but it also sucks in many ways, so let's talk about that and find out what you have to do to get good looking or cinematic footage out of it. So I used the ZV-E10 for about two weeks now and to be brutally honest I'm not a big fan of this camera but if you're looking for something cheap in the beginning it's definitely one of the better options out there. So I would say let's get it on a tripod to capture a second angle here to make it more interesting to watch and start with the first tip. Okay, this is the ZV-E10 filming me right now in S-Log2 and the first issue that you need to be aware of if you want to get good looking shots of the ZV-E10 is rolling shutter. If you don't know what rolling shutter means, rolling shutter is when you pan the camera for example, you generally move it, that straight lines bend and that looks pretty ugly and to be honest of all cameras that I ever had, this is the worst regarding rolling shutter. So the only thing that you can really do against this effect is to move the camera slowly just be aware of that if you pan your camera for example don't make it too fast make it really slow and then it will look good even on this camera also for vlogging you don't really need to worry about it because even if you turn around quick or so in vlogging you can see it but for vlogs it is okay if the footage looks a bit rough it mustn't look super professional because then it feels a bit more authentic so don't worry too much if you want to vlog, it's perfectly fine there. Now we just did some tests here regarding the rolling shutter performance and you can actually optimize it as well by putting the camera to full HD instead of 4K. Here are two examples, you can clearly see in 1080p it looks much better even if there is still a bit of rolling shutter. And the next thing to be aware of with this camera is the stabilization because the ZV-E10 does not have a stabilized sensor, instead it has digital image stabilization, what is generally not bad, but it adds a 40% crop if you want to stabilize it in camera and this is pretty significant your frame gets pretty tight then so for vlogging or generally wide angle shots if you use a lens that is not stabilized that is definitely an issue and that's why i generally recommend to use lenses with these cameras that have optical image stabilization like the kit lens has kit lens is actually a really good lens to get started with this camera even if it's not a like super nice look but aside from that if you want to vlog for example a lot then you should get the 10 to 18 millimeter lens from Sony because this is also stabilized. However, if you want to get lenses that are not stabilized, what you can do is to use it on a tripod or on a gimbal. I'm generally not a big fan of gimbals, but because this camera is so lightweight, you can actually use it with the Zion Crane M2, which is actually a gimbal that I really like because it's super small, it's super lightweight, it doesn't take much space in your bag, and it's also quite easy to set up. So if you're looking for a gimbal solution, look into the Zion Crane M2. Another option that you also have with this camera is actually to simply use the digital image stabilization and this is okay with the 40% crop for b-wall shots for example because with b-wall you don't always want to have super wide angle it's oftentimes okay to be a bit closer and in that case the internal stabilization of this camera actually works really good. And what you can also do is to turn the stabilization off completely and then you can use Catalyst Bros, which is an app from Sony on your computer and there you can add stabilization in post from the gyro data, which gives really good results, actually much better results as the internal camera stabilization. But there the issue is that you can't use ND filters or so with the camera or low shutter speeds in general, because when you have shakes in your footage, then it causes motion blur with low shutter speeds and then you can see this blur effect when it's stabilized. And the next thing to be aware of to get good looking footage out of the ZV-E10 is to choose the right picture profile. I actually played a lot around with the picture profiles on this camera, also here in my studio right now. And the only picture profile that I really can't recommend on the ZV-E10 is S-Log3 because it just adds too much noise on this camera. It really didn't look that good, especially here in my studio. Outside you could probably get away with it if you have good sunlight conditions, but I would not count on it all the time. Time. So the picture profiles that I generally recommend on this camera if you want to do a lot of color grading is at first PP7 for S-Log2 and PP10 for HLG2 and 
and generally if you want to color grade HLG PP10 then you would have to apply an HLG to 709 conversion effect in your video editor I just blend it in here how to do that it's fairly easy but I personally I don't really like the colors from HLG other people like it but I personally don't it looks too digital for me so I personally go with S-Log2 and important for S-Log2 is that you always want to overexpose a little bit at least by one stop usually sometimes even up to plus 1.7 EV that's the number that's on the bottom of your display because that makes the shadows a bit brighter and then you don't get that much noise in the shadows then you later in post you make the image darker a bit when you color grade it and then it looks good but what you can also do if you don't want to do much color grading in post is simply set it to PP off with the dynamic range optimizer on that usually gives you pretty good results as well even if you don't have much dynamic range then but most of the time it looks good and then I also have a custom picture profile here I've set it in PP9 with Cine 4 I would just write the settings here because I don't have them out of my head it's just too much but that also gives you pretty good results also if you film in studio and our next point is camera settings and there is actually one setting that you likely did not hear before which is really important to get good looking slow motion footage out of this camera so listen closely and generally how you set up your camera is up to you but to really maximize the quality of the footage you have to use the strongest codecs and that means that you should set your 4k to 100 mbits instead of 60 mbits and the 1080p footage in 24 30 or 60 frames per second to 50 mbit, like always choose the highest mbit number that you can find. And then for slow motion, I recommend on this camera to not use SNQ mode because in SNQ mode, if you shoot 120 frames per second, for example, and you get you choose 24 frames per second footage, so five times slow motion, then it uses 12 mbits, which is pretty low actually. And if you don't use SNQ, you can set your 1080p to 120 frames per second so that it's not slowed down in camera directly, but instead you have to slow it down on your computer later and this is great because that essentially means after slowing it down five times to 20% of the original speed you have 20 mbits instead of the 12 mbits that you get from the SNQ mode so by choosing this by choosing non SNQ 1080p 120 100 mbits you get the maximum quality out of that slow motion footage on this camera and of course to get the very best looking footage out of the ZVE 10 you should shoot in manual exposure mode mode and not in aperture or shutter priority or anything like that and for that let me give you my button settings that I use here so that you have all the settings that you need quickly on your hand and you don't need to scroll through the menus all the time because they are annoying so what I set it I set the rec button to focus mode and I set the shutter button to recording so that it records video when I press the shutter button but when I press the rec button it changes the focus mode then I have my background blur button this like focus mode button to focus area so that I can also quickly choose my focus area because I want to be able to have full control of my focus and then my top wheel I have set it to shutter speed I think this is actually the standard for this wheel and my back wheel I've set it to aperture like the lower wheel on the back there and then the trash can button I've set it to white balance so that I can quickly set my white balance as well and yeah use shooting mode as mentioned before that's really everything as long as you use this button configuration on the camera you can access everything quickly so this was all the camera specific stuff for the ZV-10 because as mentioned in the beginning this camera has some flaws and if you're not aware of them then your footage will come out bad but if you want to produce cinematic looking videos then you should stop thinking only about one specific camera because this is a mistake that I see all the time especially for beginners which is to just be completely camera focused because it doesn't really matter what camera you use all the time it's all the same you have shutter speed you have aperture you have ISO setting and so on but what really makes great videos is what happens around the camera it can be your lighting it can be to know how to get good shots outdoors and so on and how to frame your shots properly etc so if you want to produce cinematic looking videos you should definitely 
definitely learn more about these things instead of just looking for videos about the Sony ZV-10, for example. So definitely, if you want to learn more about videography in general, subscribe to this channel. I also have a few online courses in the description below, so check them out. Maybe there's some value for you as well. And aside from that, I hope that this video was helpful because it is definitely important to be aware of certain issues with cameras. If yes, then please leave me a thumbs up and I also hope to see you in my next video next week.